Here we are again at Bobbington to take a close look at another intriguing sidetrack in tank development, the tortoise. It really marked the end of the line for the British philosophy of having two classes of tank. Infantry, heavily armoured and slow for supporting infantry and attacks, and cruiser, faster and more mobile for exploiting any breakthroughs that their lumbering colleagues achieved. In early 1943, with mines moving towards the eventual invasion and liberation of continental Europe, people started thinking about the battle conditions they would face. The German skill in defence had been made clear in two wars by now, and this reinforced a certain view of the British military establishment, that something very well armoured and armed would be needed to breach the expected strong lines. At the time, the standard infantry tank then in service was the Churchill, but it had problems, unreliable engine and poor track performance to name just two. So they started looking around for other suitable candidates. First, a development on the Cromwell chassis was considered, the A33 Excelsior. On paper, it offered little improvement over the Churchill, and when the latter was modified, the Excelsior project was dropped. Another was the A38 Valiant. This was conceived with the fighting in the Far East in mind. Based on the Valentine chassis, it was hopelessly compromised from the start. It had to be both heavily armoured and light in weight. For once, and hopefully having learned their lesson, they started with a clean sheet of paper, and a specification was issued in April 1943 for what was described as a super heavy assault tank. Between then and February 1944, 18 separate designs were produced, each larger and heavier than the one before. In February, the tank board confirmed the design and ordered 25 straight away as the A39, without any prototype testing. But the end of the war came before the tortoise was ready and the order was cut, with just six examples being produced. One went to Germany in 1948 for testing, when the impracticality of its sheer bulk became all too clear. Transporting it was a real nightmare. At 80 tonnes there was barely a bridge, and certainly not the British Army's standard Bailey Bridge, which could take it. However, unlike its predecessors, it was mechanically reliable and a good, stable gun platform. The first thing to notice is that it looks more like a contemporary tank or tank destroyer than the TOG. It rather resembles a Stug on steroids or a distant cousin of the Russian Su-122. It has double torsion bar suspension like the Tiger II and underneath it all is a 650 HP Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, a detuned version of the famous Merlin engine fitted to planes like the Spitfire. This could, however, only manage to propel the tortoise at a maximum speed of 19 km h on the road and 6 km per hour across country, on tracks that were nearly a metre wide. It has armour of between 178 and 228 mm on the superstructure, with more on the gun mantlet. The whole of the superstructure is a single massive casting. It stands 3 metres high, about the same as Tiger II and over 25 centimetres taller than an IS-2 of the same period. This was the 32-pounder, developed originally from the 3.7-inch anti-aircraft gun. It fired a 14.5 kilo armour-piercing shell at a muzzle velocity of 880 metres per second. In tests, it proved it could knock out all of the late war German tanks. It certainly would also have handled the IS series of Russian tanks. Secondary armament consisted of three 7.92mm Beza machine guns, one in the front and two in a sort of small turret on the top. Let's have a look at the ammunition that was used on Tortoise. Now of course it was 32 pounder ammunition and the first thing we have is a 32 pounder shell, two part ammunition, so the second part is the charge and look at the size of this.
We've now moved up into the fighting compartment of the tortoise. Now the first thing that's blatantly apparent is the sheer size of it is absolutely unbelievable. But of course it did have a crew of seven, so it needs plenty of room. Let's have a look at that crew in each individual position. Now the first position and where I'm sat at the moment is where the crew commander would sit. Directly to the front left is where the machine gun operator is. And just to the right of him, you'd find the gunner's position. You can see the gunner's seat, directly in front of that, the Travis hand wheel, and just above that, the Travis indicator. You'd then have two loaders positions, one located to the left and one located to the right of the breach of the main armament. And everywhere you look around, there is actually ammunition stowage. Don't forget, of course, Tortoise had two-part ammunition. We then move across to the second of our machine gun operator's positions. And the final crew position for Tortoise, located to the front right, was the driver's position. The commander's position has absolutely loads of room, especially when you compare it to model main battle tanks. Some of the key things he's got in here, you can see then he's got a Travis hand wheel, so it enabled the commander's capella to rotate. And he's actually got a fairly good array of periscopes all the way around, so he didn't have a bad view whatsoever when he was fully closed down. And also, directly to the front right of the commander, you'd also see another Travis indicator, um, a good way that he could actually align the gunner onto something if he observed it first. So, as far as the British Army was concerned, this really was the end of the road for the super heavy breakthrough tanks. Even if, as if in this case, they could be made reliable and given a good gun. Their sheer size and weight had to call into question their value on the battlefield. Simply getting them there would have been a huge headache. And by this time, what we know now as the main battle tank had started to emerge in the form of the British Centurion, with the very good 20 pounder gun and the 105mm, which was not far behind. No longer did tanks have to be artificially restricted down to the pace of the walking soldier, since infantrymen were now being carried in APCs. The tortoise remained a testimony to the persistence of an outdated belief and the tenacity of the individuals who held it.